Well, good evening to you, my Victory Through Faith Church family and friends. Of course, this is Pastor Jay. I speak and release the blessing of the Lord over your lives. I pray that you're ready to receive from the Lord today. I've got a good midweek message for you. Uh, I'm excited to share it with you because it's something I've been feeding on for the last month or so. And I knew that I was feeding in order to ultimately feed you. And so now that I've eaten for myself, now it's time for me to feed you what I've been chewing on for the last month or so. And I believe it's going to really bless you. We're going to deal with some fundamentals of the faith. Amen. And I believe you're going to be blessed by what you hear today. So let's go to God in prayer because we always want to prep our hearts because we always want to experience the wisdom and revelation of God whenever we hear the word preached. So let's pray so that we can prime our hearts and be ready and receptive to receive receive the word this evening father god we thank you for another opportunity to come boldly before your throne of grace and receive exactly what we need so father god i pray right now that we believe and receive for wisdom for revelation knowledge for understanding and understanding how to apply the knowledge that we glean today lord holy spirit i thank you for making the word plain I thank you for empowering us and equipping us by faith, Lord God, so that the power within us can be awakened and activated. Lord, I give you my mind. I give you my mouth. I give you my heart. I give you my whole being. Everything you desire to say and everything you desire to do, I yield myself to be used by you this evening, Lord God. So I thank you in advance for your people being able to be fed by the word that goes forth so that our faith can grow, our faith can be strengthened and we can operate according to the divine directives that you've given us out of your word. It's in Jesus name we pray and we thank you in advance for it, Father God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, again, I've got a great word to share with you this evening. I believe it's going to really bless you. It's going to be a series that we'll be on for quite some time. Well, I say quite some time, at least several weeks, because what I've got to share with you uh, is really important. It's necessary. Um, one of the things that I understand to be so in the body of Christ is that we have knowledge of the things of God, but we don't always apply that knowledge that we have. And so in that vein, I want to begin a lesson series today entitled Work Your Faith. Work Your Faith. Now, if you had to give a lesson text to it or a scripture text to it, uh, we would give that Romans chapter 1. I'll read verses 16 and 17 for you out of the King James Version of the Bible. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it, the gospel of Christ, is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. As it is written, the just shall that's you. That's me. That's every born again child of God. The just shall live by faith. Now, God didn't say the just shall use faith. God said the just shall live by faith. It's the way we go about our day to day activities. It's the way we exist in the kingdom of God. We live, we move and we have our being in him by faith. Faith, And so for my introduction, I just want to make this known to you for the believer, for the child of God, for the just. There is only one prescribed way to live. And that way, of course, is by faith. There's only one prescribed method to live for the body of Christ, for the believer, for those that have been made just through Jesus Christ. And that way is by faith. Now, I, dealt, I said to you a moment ago that we have knowledge, but we don't always apply the knowledge that we have. If we fail to understand how to work our faith, then faith won't work for us. That's important. If we fail to understand how to work our faith, 
Man, faith won't work for us. I believe that's pretty uh, point blank. I believe that's pretty simple. If we fail to understand how to work our faith, then our faith won't work for us. And this series is about working our faith. Work your faith. Work your faith. Put your faith to work. Don't just know you have faith. Work it. Make it do what it do. Make your work work your faith and make your faith work for you. Amen. We must work our faith if we want to live the life that God created for us to live. We dealt last week about predetermined provision. If you want to experience that predetermined provision in your life, you got to work your faith. You got to work your faith. Much of believing and receiving from God is understanding that he's already done it. I just got to receive it. Catch this now. I'll say it again. Much of receiving from God is realizing that he's already done it. I've just got to receive it. We don't go to God asking him to do what the word tells us he's already done. We go to God in faith, believing and receiving that we have what he has already provided. So to live successfully as God ordained for us to live, we must work our faith. If you want to live the way God wants you to live, you got to work your faith. You know, those desires that you have within you, those things that you want to do, that level of living that you want to aspire to, those things that you want to do for others. You got to work your faith to get there. You, you can work up. You can work a secular job. You can do all the worldly things that they tell us to do. You can go to school. Uh, you can finish high school. You can go to college. You can get your doctorate. You can get your master's. You can get all of that. But if you aren't. But if you as a child of God are not walking by faith, you I don't care what level you're living on. If you aren't walking by faith, you're living far below what God has for you. You are living below Oh, that's good. You know, we hear in the world where if you make a certain amount, you either you are either living above or below the poverty line. Well, for us as children of God, if we are not walking by faith, we are living below the kingdom line. Ah, glory to God. There's a line for the believer to pass and surpass that the world cannot because the world doesn't walk by faith. The world can only live according to what the world can offer. But we're in the world, but we're not of the world. So when we work our faith, we can live above the world. We can live out of the kingdom and we can live successfully as God ordained for us to live. So I just want to talk to you in this lesson. And that's what I'm going to do for most of this series. I'm just going to talk to you and make sure that you have a working understanding of faith so that you know how to work your faith. Because we, we hear teaching and we hear preaching and we get it mentally, but we don't receive it in our hearts and we don't apply it to our lives. So that's why it's important that we understand that we've got to work our faith. You got to put your faith to work. Now, listen to this because this is important. Again, I just wanted this might be a little informal, but I just want to talk to you because I, I want to make sure that you get this because it was so poignant for me and it was so powerful for me that I want to make sure I take my time. I walk through this to make sure and ensure that you get this because if you get it, it'll radically change the way you go about your daily business. It'll radically change the way you operate in this world because you're working your faith, understanding that I'm not limited by or to what the world has to offer or what the world tries to withhold. So listen to this, because this is important for how, how deep we go later. Most people think faith and belief are the same thing. Most believers think, well, if I believe it, I'm in faith. And if I'm in faith, I believe it. Most people believe or think that faith and belief are the same thing. Most people think that believing is faith and that faith is believing. If I'm in faith, I'm believing. If I'm believing, I'm in faith. Well, if you have faith, that means you believe. And if you believe, that means you're in faith, right? Wrong. That is not the case. Faith and belief are not the same thing. What? Pastor Jay, you tripping. No, no, no. Just listen to me for a moment. Faith and belief are not the same thing. I'll expound on that in a moment to help you out. Most people think if I believe, that's faith. I got faith because I believe. And if I have faith, that means I believe. That is not the case. You can, oh, listen to this. 
It's possible to believe yet not have faith. Wow. How is that possible, Pastor Jack? Well, stick with me. I'm, you know, I'm going to tell you it is possible to believe and yet not have faith. How is that? Because faith and belief, both faith and belief are two sides of the same coin. Faith and belief are two sides of the same coin, just like you got heads and tails on a quarter. Faith and belief are two sides of the same coin. If one of those sides are not intact, it won't work. It won't spin. If somebody hands you a quarter that has a head side, but the tail side is blank. If you try to give somebody that quarter and if they're paying attention, they're not going to receive that from you because it's not legal tender. It's counterfeit. It's fake. In order to be a uh, legitimate, it has to have both a head and a tail side. Well, for, for you to operate in the kingdom of God, you have to have both faith and belief. If you have belief but no faith, you might be deceiving yourself because you say, well, I believe God's word. I believe what God said. So that means I got faith. No, that means you believe. That does not necessarily mean that you have faith. Mm. If you got faith but you don't have belief, you can't have faith without belief. But if you say you have belief, but and you think you got faith, you got to examine yourself to see if those things are so. And I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you out. I know I'm setting you up. But listen to this, because I'm, I'm going to draw the distinction for you. I said that faith and belief are two sides of the same coin. Listen, belief is agreeing to the truth of a thing. For instance, Oh, that's good. OK, I I'll, thank you, Lord. Belief is agreeing to the truth of a thing. Faith is acting on what you believe. So you, now you can see the distinction. Belief is when I agree to the truth of a thing. I heard something and I believe it. I agree that it is true. But that's not faith because faith is acting on what you believe. So it's not possible to be in faith without belief. However, it is possible to believe a thing and yet not be in faith. I'll give you a prime example and then I'll go a little further. You can believe that it's going to rain tomorrow. You can watch the news. You can scroll through your phone. You can check your weather app. You can read the paper if you still do that. You can believe with all your heart that it's going to rain tomorrow, but your faith won't be demonstrated until you walk out the house and we see how prepared you are. If you don't take an umbrella, you might believe it's going to rain, but you don't have any faith. If you know, for our ladies, you might have rain boots when you know it's going to rain pretty heavy. If you walk out the door to go to work the, tomorrow and you don't have on your rain boots and you don't have your umbrella, you believe it's going to rain, but you're not operating in faith because faith is acting on what you believe. Belief is I agree that it's going to rain. Faith is I'm taking my umbrella with me. Oh, you got to get that. Belief is I think it's going to rain. Faith is I'm taking my umbrella with me. So faith and belief are related, but they are not the same. Faith, that's good, Lord. Faith comes out of belief. Once I enter into belief, my next step is faith. You get that? Listen to me. Once I enter into belief, agreeing that something is true, my next step should be faith, acting on what I believe to be true. Because I believe it to be true that it's going to rain tomorrow. I put my umbrella in my car and I make sure I got my raincoat and I make sure I got some shoes that I don't mind getting wet because I believe that it's going to rain tomorrow and I demonstrate my faith by packing my necessary supplies to keep me as dry as possible. So belief is agreeing to the truth of a thing. Faith is acting on what you believe. Listen to this. You can believe something to be true and what you believe can be true. You can believe something to be true and what you believe can be true. However, if you don't act on what you believe, what you believe won't work for you. That might have confused you, but I want to say it again because you got to catch this. What you believe can be true. It's going to rain tomorrow. However, if you don't act on what you believe, 
by packing your raincoat, by packing your umbrella, by wearing some old shoes, what you believe won't work for you. So if, it, if you get caught in a torrential downpour and you don't have any raincoat, you don't have any umbrella, you don't have any rain boots, what you believed about the weather report doesn't work for you because you didn't act in faith on what you believed. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. You know it's going to rain, but you failed to act on what you believe and therefore there was no faith in what you believed. Yeah, I believe it's going to rain. Yeah, I saw the news. I believe it's going to rain. I concur. My phone concurred with it. It's going to rain tomorrow. OK, a lot of believers are in that belief phase. I believe God's word is true. I believe God said it. I believe God's going to do it. OK, what's your response? What are you doing to demonstrate what you believe? The rain analogy by me packing my umbrella, by me packing a rain jacket, by me packing rain boots. I demonstrate to others what I believe. A lot of us are saying we believe a thing, but we are. Lord Jesus, help us. A lot of us are saying we believe things, but there is no action to demonstrate what we say we believe. If you say it's going to rain tomorrow, how you dress should, should tell everybody you knew it was going to rain. What you carry, you know, when you when you go to work, it might be sunny and 70 degrees at nine o'clock that morning. And you might be walking with an umbrella under your right arm and people might look at you like, why do you have that umbrella? It's beautiful outside. I believe it's going to rain at two o'clock. And it's going to rain from two o'clock to seven o'clock and I get off at five. So although I don't need it now, I'm carrying my umbrella with me to work because I believe that when I get off, it's going to be raining. And I demonstrated what I believed by carrying my umbrella. So right now it doesn't look like rain, but I believe it's going to rain. I have faith that it's going to rain. And you can see I got faith that it's going to rain because I carry my umbrella when it doesn't look necessary. Mm. Faith is what you carry when it doesn't look necessary. Faith is what you carry and what you say and what you do when nobody can see why you're saying it and why you're doing it. Faith is acting in agreement with what I believe, even when what I believe isn't happening yet. I'll say that again. Faith is acting on what I believe, even when I, even when what I believe is not happening yet. Yeah, I believe it. And I demonstrate it by what I do. I carry the umbrella when it's sunny and 70 degrees because I believe when I leave, it's going to be a torrential downpour. And people might make fun of you while you're carrying your umbrella in. Look how beautiful it is. Why you got that umbrella? That's not necessary. You don't have to respond. You don't have to clap back. You don't have to make them understand why you're doing what you're doing. You just say, just wait. <laughs> they that wait on the Lord. Just wait. Just wait, because I'm acting on something I believe that I can't see right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory to God. What you believe can be true. However, if you don't act on what you believe, that's faith. If you don't act on what you believe, what you believe won't work for you. Wow. Now, listen to this. What you believe can be true and you can prove it by the word of God. I, I can go to the word and I believe I'm healed. First Peter 2, 24 says by his stripes, we were healed. That's true. I believe it. But until you start doing something about what you believe is not faith. Ooh, Jesus, help us with this one, Lord. Until you start doing something about what you believe is not faith. I believe the word says I'm healed. I believe God wants me to be healed. I believe God wants me to be healthy. I believe God wants me to be whole. Praise God. What are you doing in agreement with what you believe? Because faith is acting on what I believe. Yeah, I believe God has healed me. I believe God wants me healed. Praise God. What am I doing to demonstrate that I believe his word? What am I doing to demonstrate my faith in his word? Until you start doing something about what you believe, it's not faith, it's only belief. And unfortunately, and this is why a lot of believers are upset, 
This is why a lot of believers are walking around disappointment. This is why a lot of believers have left church. This is why a lot of believers don't listen to their pastors anymore. This is why a lot of believers are just living like the world because believing alone. Oh, catch this. Believing alone will not get you any results. Ooh. I know the word says, if you believe all things are possible to him that believes. But guess what? If you believe, you're going to act on what you believe. See, it's not enough to just, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Okay, what are you doing? What are you doing to correspond with what you believe? Because if all you're doing is believing, believing alone, believing alone will not get results you know how people you know how people say i believe god wants me healed and they die prematurely i believe god wants me well and they're still dealing with the ailment i believe god wants me to prosper and they're struggling financially i believe god wants me to be in a happy healthy relationship and they're and they're not even in a good relationship because believing alone will not get you the results you must do more than believe Jesus, whatever you do, how you act is based on what you believe. Ooh, you got to do more than believe. Whatever you do, how you act is based on what you believe. They go together. Your belief and your action must go together. When your belief corresponds well with your action, Faith is born. See, because I believe God wants me healed, then I begin decreeing it. I begin saying it. I begin confessing it. And I begin acting like a healed person acts. Because I believe God wants me to prosper, I begin saying it. I begin doing things that prosperous people do. I begin making provision and making plans for my future because God wants me to prosper. And I got to make sure that I'm doing something in line with with what I believe. Whatever you do is based on what you believe. Glory to God. Whatever you do is based on what you believe. But you can't just believe it. You have to not only believe a thing, you also must do something with what you believe before what you believe will affect you in a personal way. Praise God you believe. You believe. OK, that's 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 great. That's one side of the coin. Now, what are you going to do with what you believe? Yes, you believe. I believe the word. Hallelujah. Glory. Now, what are you doing to show what you believe? You know, the Bible, there's a text in the Bible where there wasn't there weren't words exchanged. The Bible just says, and when he saw their faith, wow, what they were doing demonstrated what they believed. Now, we're saying a lot of things, but it's what we're doing, demonstrating to God and to others what we believe. Yeah, I believe that God wants me to be the head and not the tail, but you won't take any promotion at your job. They're asking you to take training so you can be advanced. And you're saying, no, I don't want that responsibility. But you're declaring you're the head and not the tail. Well, you can't be the head and not the tail without responsibility. And they're trying to train you for where they want you. But you keep turning down advancement opportunities. And so declaring in church, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath, but refusing to receive any advancement advancement training you believe it but you're not in faith for it oh, jesus it's not just what we say we believe it's what we do with what we believe that allows what we believe to affect us to affect us to affect our lives in a personal way listen to this Faith works the same in the spirit realm as it does in the natural realm. Yeah, because you got natural faith and you got the God kind of faith. We'll talk about that later on. Faith work later on in the lesson series, not today. Faith works in the same in the spirit realm as it does in the natural realm. The example I gave you, if you're in faith that it's going to rain tomorrow, naturally, you pack your raincoat, you pack your umbrella because you expect rain. Well, in the same way, 
spiritually, when you expect the thing to occur, you got to prep for it. You got to do something in line with what you expect to take take place. Faith is faith, whether in the natural realm or in the spiritual realm and faith in both realms, the natural realm, the spiritual realm, the world, natural faith and the God kind of faith. Faith in both realms is based on what you believe. What you believe. It, uh, ooh, OK, what you believe is based on something you have been told by word of mouth, the written page or in some other form. So what you believe is based on what you heard. You either heard about word of mouth or written or it was written somewhere or in some other form of communication. But you came into contact with it. OK, so faith works the same in the natural realm as it does in the spiritual realm. This is how it works. One, you are given information Two, you believe that information. And then three, you act on it. That's how faith works. Whether we're talking about natural faith or the God kind of faith, you do three things. You are given or you receive information. You believe the information that you received. And number three, you act on it. Now, it's possible to be given the information and believe that information, yet not be benefited by the information you believe because you fail to do step number three. You fail to act. On what you believe you got drenched in the torrential downpour because you failed to pack your umbrella. You were given information and you believed that information, but you failed to act on that information. If you believe the word of God, which is divine information, but you're not acting on it, God's word will never do you any personal good. Oh, Jesus, help your people. I'll say it again. If you believe the word of God, which is divine information, but you are not acting on it, God's word will never do you any personal good. <clears throat> and you and a friend can be standing on the same scripture. You believe that God's going to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Praise God. And you just quoting it and quoting it and quoting it. But you aren't doing anything that agrees with what you say you believe. And your friend is making changes that they restructured their budget instead of spending a lot going out to eat. They're making sure that they've got more income coming in so they can operate the kingdom of God system to sow seed because the word tells us whatever you sow, you shall reap. And so they understand if I need financial income, I got to sow financial seed. If I need a financial harvest, I got to sow financial seed. And so not only are they saying that God supplies all their needs according to his riches and glory, by Christ Jesus, but they are sowing into his kingdom so they can reap of abundance. But all you were doing was just quoting the scripture every day, but there was nothing you did that matched what you believe. You believed it in your heart. I'm not saying you don't believe it. You believe it in your heart, but you aren't acting in alignment with what you believe. You can believe all day long that what the Bible says is true, but what the Bible says will not impact your life in a personal way until you start acting on God's word. I'll say it again. What you believe will not impact your life in a personal way until you start acting on God's word. You got to act on the word. You've got to act on the word. <laughs> Even though the word is true, and it is, the word is true. I believe the word is infallible. I believe it is inerrant. I believe there is no mistake in God's original word. But even though the word is true, it won't do you any personal good until you act on it. Yeah, I, I can quote a scripture all day, but am I changing my behavior to align with what I say I believe? Yeah, you can get in your car and say, I believe this car can take me from my home to my job in 10 minutes. Praise God. You're in the car, full tank of gas, brand new car, works like it's supposed to. You got the keys in your hand. You say, I believe this car can take me from my home to my job in 10 minutes. Now, you only got 15 minutes to get to work before you're late. 20 minutes later, you're sitting in the driveway. I believe that this car can take me from my home to my job in 10 minutes. Well, now you're already tired and you're still sitting in the driveway. Why? Because your belief 
is not enough. It's true. It's a brand new car. It can take you from your home to your job in 10 minutes because you stay 10 minutes away from your job. However, if you don't act on what you believe by cranking that car up and driving to your location, what you believe won't benefit you. You've got to do something in line. I have to do something in line. We have to do something in line with what we say we believe. Remember this. Faith is simply acting on what you believe, because I believe that this car can get me from my home to my job in 10 minutes. I get in the car. I crank the car up. I put it in gear and I drive to my job in 10 minutes and I'm on time with a couple of minutes to spare. Why? Because I don't even have to tell people I believe my car can get me from my home to my job because just from the simple fact that I got in it and drove to my job demonstrated to everybody around me that I believe my car can get me there. Why? Because I got in it, I crunk it, and I drove it. We don't have to be so focused on telling people what we believe. We need to be more focused about showing people what we believe, demonstrating what we believe by acting in agreement with what we say we believe. That's all faith is. Believing is fine. If you believe all things are possible, however, Faith is acting on what you believe. You know what you genuinely. Oh, okay, I'm going to get ready to wrap this up. Turn to James chapter one. I want to show you some scripture to back it up and then I'm going to wrap it up for today. You know what you genuinely believe by what you consistently say and do. The umbrella analogy, the rain analogy with the umbrella, the car analogy with the keys in the driveway. You know what you genuinely believe by what you consistently say and do. You say you're ready to be in a long standing, happy relationship, but you're doing the same things you've been doing in the relationships that have been short lived and, 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 and traumatic. Then you got to do something differently. You cannot continue to do the same thing and expect a different result. That has often been defined as insanity. You cannot do the same thing over and over and over again to no avail and expect to get a different result. Faith is acting on what you believe and you know what you, gen I mean genuinely believe because it's possible to deceive yourself. You can say you believe one thing but do something differently and just because you say you believe it, I know you don't because what you did doesn't match with what you said. <laughs> what you did didn't match what you said. What you're doing not is not in agreement with what you're saying you believe. And therefore, you will not be affected personally in a beneficial way. In James chapter one, let's look at this real quick because we got to bring this home. This is so good. I told you this is going to be a really good series for you. It challenged me. It reminded me of some things. It, it called me to the carpet on some things. And I pray that it shows you where you're missing it. Listen to this. James chapter one, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own self. See, when we hear the word and we say we believe the word, but we're not doing what we say we believe. The only people we're deceiving is us because everybody else can see through it. They already know. No, nah, they're not for real. They're not sincere. They've been saying that. They've been saying that for the last 15 years and hadn't changed at all. So they already know you don't believe it. The only one who is deceived is you. Look at chapter two, verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit them? What good does it say? What good is it to tell somebody to be warmed and be filled if you don't give them clothes to warm up and if you don't give them food to fill their bellies? What you say doesn't benefit them at all. Verse 17 says, even so faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. Yes, a man may say you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works. I'm going to show you what I believe by what I consistently do. I'm going to show you what I believe by what I consistently say and do. Glory to God. Verse 19. Thou believest that there. Listen, that's why faith and belief is not the same thing, because devils believe, but they don't have faith. 
Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So they believe and they tremble. What's lacking for them is faith. Because if they had faith, they would act differently toward Jesus. So because they can't have faith in Jesus, they believe, but they tremble because with the absence of faith, they cannot be delivered from their ultimate demise. Glory to God. So belief by itself won't work for you if you don't enter into faith. Verse 20. But will you know, O oh man, oh vain man, that faith without works is dead? Faith without works is dead. Belief without action is not faith at all. And by faith we live. The just shall live by faith. Yeah, you got to work your faith. You got to work your faith. You got to say what you believe and you got to act in agreement with what you believe consistently in order to work your faith and in order for your faith to work. Amen. Praise God. I know you were a little challenged by this, but I pray it stirs you up. This series is going to be a blessing to you because it's going to allow us to actually execute the faith process. We hear the information. We believe the information. We act on the information. When you do that, Anything's possible for you. And that's when we start living the God kind and the God quality of life. Praise God. I appreciate you taking this time out to fellowship with me around the word. I pray that you were blessed by what you heard. Remember this. You are empowered by faith. You are equipped for service and your success is in God's word. You got to get in it so it can get in you until next week. I love you. Be blessed in Jesus name.